So you're a Nickelback and you think you're pretty good at it. Today we're going to talk about four things that makes a Nickelback elite on DB Tip Clips. Well, what's a nickel worth these days? I'm here to tell you it's a whole lot of dollars and cents. More and more Nickelbacks are involved in stopping the wide open passing attacks that are out there piling up the points left and right. Chances are, if you don't have a good nickel back, you're not getting off the field on third down, and the offense is going to find themselves in the painted area of the field quite a bit. So it's important for us to talk about what makes an elite nickel back, and that's the topic of this video today. So we're going to discuss those four things on this video to make sure if you're a nickel back, you're working on these things and really trying to be better in these four areas. But before we do that, of course, I need you to go ahead and subscribe. Hit the subscribe button. Got a lot of great information on defensive back play, whether it's coverages, tips, drills, etc., etc. Whole bunch of stuff that you need to know. So go ahead and subscribe and hit the bell so you're notified the next time I put out a great defensive back video like this one. Also, you want to follow me on social media? Join me on Instagram at All Eyes DB Camp. Got a lot of great content there for you. And if you really want to dig into the details of being a defensive back, get the inside stuff the advanced stuff the stuff that's going to really take you to the elite level i would encourage you to join my all eyes db camp members area where i talk go more in depth on the coverages reading routes understanding what the offense is trying to do drills techniques tips all the things you need to be the best defensive back that you can be i've got hundreds and hundreds of guys in that uh, members area right now that are just eating they're they're just killing it right now because knowledge is the key i'm gonna have a link to the all eyes db camp members area down below i would encourage you to take advantage of that all right so the topic here today is what are the four things that an elite nickelback needs to have and number one is definitely quickness you kind of knew that nickelbacks tend to be smaller guys though they can also be big guys i've seen six footers six foot one six foot two guys playing the nickelback position. I'm here to tell you though, whether you're big or small, playing that nickelback spot, you better have some quickness to you. So you big guys out there that fancy yourselves as playing on the inside and covering slot wide receivers, you guys have seen the slot wide receivers, right? The Stefan Diggs's, the Cole Beasley's, the Cooper Cups, the guys of the world that line up inside there, they're extremely quick individuals. If you can't match that quickness in any way, shape or form, I'm here to tell you you're gonna have a really hard time being effective at all in there. So. If you're a big guy, yes, it's good that you can be a little bit more physical, you're a little bit longer, you're going to be able to get your hands on guys more than maybe a smaller guy, you're still going to have to have some quickness because sometimes you're just going to miss and you're going to need to be able to react and those slot wide receivers have a bunch of moves in there so sometimes you're just going to have to mirror a guy even when you're big and being able to have a quick change of direction only works to your advantage. Also, when you're lining up in there and you're playing nickel, you are closer to the football. That means the ball comes out quicker, it gets to the wide receiver faster, and if you don't have quick reactions, if you don't have a quick mind plus quick feet inside there at the slot position, uh, covering those slot guys, they're gonna complete a lot of balls on you. A lot of third downs are gonna turn into first downs and you're gonna have a whole huddle full of guys pissed off at you. So if you're a big guy or a little guy working inside there and you're playing nickel back, the number one thing you need to be is quick. You gotta be able to change the direction. So there's things that you need to work on. If you're out there with your cones and you're trying to do your cone drills, spend a good amount of time changing direction, strengthening your lower legs. Um, we're talking about the ankle and the calf area. You're gonna to wanna to be able to get that foot in the ground, plant it and change direction because you're gonna be facing a whole lot of that. Very rarely are you going in one direction when you're playing Nickelback. Whether you're defending the run or you're defending a slot wide receiver running one of those funny routes, whether it's a whip, a return, a delay, they've got all kind of funny tricks in there. You better be quick uh, when you're playing inside as a Nickelback. That's A number one. Number two, you're gonna need to be physical. Now, that sounds a little funny because like I said, by and large, Nickelbacks tend to be smaller guys. Being smaller doesn't mean you can't be physical. There are a ton of guys in there that are five foot nine, five foot 10 guys that are physical. Why are, do you have to be physical? Number one, you're gonna have to get on those guys that are coming off on the ball. Those slot guys have a lot of room to work with. If you're not physical with them, they're just gonna help themselves to all of that space, all of that room, and they're gonna get a bunch of easy catches on you. Now, once again, very typically on third down, and that pisses guys off and it really hurts your football team. But the other reason is, 
You're really a glorified linebacker when you're playing nickelback. You're just a, a quicker, more athletic version of a linebacker. And sometimes on third down or when they bring you in on the field. And listen, let me just say this. Nickelbacks now are on the field for the entire defensive series, whether that's first, second, or third down. But even if you're a guy that just comes on on third down, sometimes they'll just run the football. That means you're going to be in the run fit. You may have to take on a block, whether it's from a lead back or even a guard coming around. You're going to have to somehow use your physicality to get off of that block and then also make a tackle. You might have to tackle the running back. The other thing, too, is, listen, when those receivers catch those balls, you're going to need to be able to tackle them, too. And sometimes, as a nickelback, you may find yourself covering a tight end. If he catches that football, you're going to have to be physical enough to get that guy down to the ground. So you big guys, maybe you pride yourself on physicality. If you don't, I would suggest that you get involved. Get that mindset right now that you're going to fit in that run fit. You're closer to the offensive line. You're closer to all that traffic that's going on in there. And again, if they run that football, you're going to need to be involved in that. Same thing for you smaller guys as well. You're going to need to fit up in that run sometimes. Get in those A and B gaps and be a factor when the ball is run. So being physical along with quick is going to be a big positive for you. And it's going to be take you along the ways of being an elite defensive back at the nickelback position. The number three thing you're gonna need to have to be an elite nickelback is awareness. Again, you're closer to the action. You are, again, a glorified linebacker and linebackers tend to be the smartest guys on the field. Why? Because they've gotta know what's going on in front of them. That means they know what's happening with the defensive line, what gaps they're supposed to be in. And they also have got to know what's going on behind them because linebackers are involved in the pass game as well. They've got to know the zones. They've got to know where they fit. they got to know who's around them and what their jobs are. So having some awareness as a nickelback will even actually make you quicker. The quicker you can react to what's happening in front of you, the faster you can get to the play. So that might even allow you to get by a block before the blocker is able to get there. But whatever the case may be, you're closer to the action, you're closer to the quarterback. So having the awareness right there is going to get you to the play, get you to the ball a whole lot faster. Nickelbacks have to be smart, guys. There's a lot of stuff going on. You have to be able to communicate with the cornerbacks on the outside, the safeties behind you, and then the linebackers that are next to you. So you can't be in that nickelback position not understanding. The other thing, too, is there's a lot of motion that happens in there, and you're going to be a part of that. Slot guys motion a lot. They can go into the backfield. They go into orbit motion. They can stack. There's a lot of things that happen. And with you being on the inside, you're involved in all of it. And you've got to be a smart guy with awareness that has to be able to make a decision and react to the communication that's going on around you. Nickelback's just not going to be maybe, maybe where a corner could just be out there playing man all day and just cover and stick a guy. That's not going to be the case for a nickelback. Oftentimes, a man could turn into zone simply because of emotion or a way that the receivers stack or a certain formation that the offense gives you. And being aware and being able to make the quick adjustments is going to allow you to be an elite nickel back. And the more you are aware as a nickel back, the more things your coach is going to be apt to do with you. So you may blitz. Um, he may be able to play a little bit more zone with you. So, you know, sometimes you get tired of nickel back. I know guys hate to admit that. But sometimes playing man the entire game can really, really wear you out and open you up to being beat on a play. Because, you know, those receivers can jog in and out and a guy could come off the sidelines really, really fresh. And if because you aren't that aware, your coach has to play man to man all the time, that's not going to be to your advantage. You're going to get exhausted and a guy may be able to beat you just on um, you being fatigued. However, if you have some awareness and the guys around you are also smart and you can be a good leader there, then your coach is able to run some zones, mix some zones in there because he feels confident you're going to be able to get to your area and not bust the cover. So having some awareness at Nickelback is the third thing that's going to make you elite. And finally, the fourth thing you're going to need is patience. You're going to need patience covering a slot wide receiver because, as I said, they have a whole lot of moves and the moves may be quite quick and there's several of them at a time receiver could come off and give you three or four moves in that slot before he breaks to his area elite defensive backs have patience and don't go overreacting to moves in there from slot wide receivers the other thing too is you are really really close to the action a lot of what's taking place on the offensive side of the ball namely in the backfield is to manipulate you again as a nickelback you are a linebacker and so play action fakes trades 
uh, movement of linemen and a lot of the motion that goes on in the backfield is to attack you the nickelback as well as the linebackers and so if you're not patient you overreact and you don't have much of a football IQ and you're impatient there's going to be a lot of times where you're out of position and it could be very very hurtful that's both against the run and the pass could you imagine overreacting to uh, a play action fake and then there's a reverse that comes along that's definitely going to be on you so good defensive backs that play the nickelback position are going to be smart they have studied film and then when they get in the game they're going to believe what they see by believing what you see that allows you to be patient sometimes because you're more aware of you know moves that are not authentic or anytime that they're trying to fake you out get you out of position you are first of all you have the iq and then you believe what you see so you are patient and you don't find yourself out of position so patience comes with confidence confidence comes from studying film studying film allows you to have a higher iq all of those things work together on game day when you're playing nickelback and gives you the patience that you need to be in the position that you need to be in to make the big plays all right and it's just that simple you need those four things to be an elite defensive back playing the nickelback position let's quickly review what those things are first you're going to need to be quick you need to be able to change direction when you're covering inside as a nickelback the next thing you're going to need to have is some physicality with your big small whatever the case may be you're close to the action taking on blocks tackling running backs is a part of the job description you're going to need to be physical to do that the third thing is awareness a lot of stuff is going on when you're close to the football as a nickelback there's motions there's trades there's linemen pulling all of that good stuff you need to be aware of and understand rather quickly what the offense is trying to do so you can get to where you need to be to make a play and the fourth thing is closely related to that third thing you got to have the patience so if you're a study if you've studied your opponent which you should be doing as a nickelback because you're too vital too important not to know um, you have a football iq and you can believe what it is that you see happening during a play it'll make you patient and it'll allow you to be in the area that you need to be those four things work on those where do you stand on those four things do you have any of those four things do you have all four of those things go ahead and drop a comment right now on what it is out of these four things you think you're missing be candid be you know be truthful drop a comment below tell us all tell me which one of those four things you need to work on the most and then set out this off season to go and be stronger at those things all right hope you enjoyed the video if you liked the video go ahead and give it a like give it a big thumbs up share the video with some of your other defensive back friends and of course like i said in the beginning go ahead and subscribe to this channel a whole bunch of defensive back stuff here that you need to know and more to come so you don't want to miss out any of it go ahead and hit the bell and like i said uh, i have a link in the description down below for the all eyes db camp members area if you're really trying to take your defensive back play to the elite elite level definitely need to be a member of that go ahead and make that investment all right hope you guys enjoyed the video and as always all eyes db camp consistency breeds results